Welcome to our next episode of the Gateway Triangle Advocate Award winner series. I'm Nick and my co-host today is Rashik. In this series, we're featuring our awesome customers and partners who won awards at the 2021 Cisco Global Advocate Awards. Today, we have the winner of the CX Ambassador of the Year Award, John Pell. The CX Ambassador of the Year Award category was a Cisco team nominated one, um, and our team chose candidates who were the most supportive of other customers within the community and shared the most knowledge while advocating for Cisco in the CX channel of our advocacy community. John Pell is an advisory solutions consultant at ServiceNow and is a gateway rock star, our highest level within the community. He also played an integral part in working with the Cisco CX team to upgrade his company's contact center. So we're super excited to have him. Thanks for joining us, John. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Um, yeah, it's great. It's great to it's great to meet you. I don't think think we've spoken in person yet, so it's always good to to meet new people with within the gateway. Yeah, definitely good to uh, to put put actual faces to the names and uh, and things like that. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, at some point this year um, we'll be able to actually uh, uh, do a face to face meeting at uh, an event somewhere. So yeah, that'll be good. Love the odds that you come to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that'd be awesome so um yeah so our global community spreads far and wide um so tell us a little about a little bit about where you're from and what you like like about where you live um yeah so i'm from uh northampton uh in the united kingdom um and lived here all of my life um which is <laughs> both both good and bad um it's good because all of my family um, and my wife's family uh, are in uh, in Northampton, so you know, very very uh, close family uh, knit group um, and everything like that. Um, but we also, you know, really like travelling. So we've been um, uh, BC before children. Um, we did a lot of travelling um, around around the world. Um, so went to um, Australia, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Russia. Um, a lot of places in Europe um, and quite a few different places in the US. Um, um, I think favorite favorite place uh, or places um, one in the US, San Francisco, um, because it's I just find the culture and the weather um, so diverse um, that, that you get you know get to get to see all all all, uh, all types of things uh, um, in San Francisco, and it's lovely that you can go from one district to another and ex uh, you know sample uh, different types of food um, and uh, and uh, yeah and cultures. Um, and then the other the other one um, is a place called Early Beach in Australia, um, and that's uh, what they call the uh, the gateway to the Whit Sunday Islands, and it is such a picturesque part of the world it's uh yeah it's lovely we we went there for our uh, for part of our honeymoon um and we've said you know it's definitely on our uh, to-do list to go back there again um but yeah northampton um uh, my my hometown um it's probably most famous for um uh, the what was termed the boot and shoe industry in the united kingdom um so lots of um handmade shoe factories um uh, were, were based in northampton um and my uh, my dad used to work for a company called church's shoes um and church's shoes are well known globally as a uh, you know um uh, a, a good uh, quality or high, very high quality menswear shoe um so so yeah that's uh, the main thing that northampton are uh, known for and our football team uh, northampton town football club uh, the nickname is the cobblers um as a as a nod to that as our uh, sort of like key key industry uh, that was that was prevalent in northampton nice i actually didn't know that about the um about about yeah um northampton being sort of said having having that history with churches and the cobbler. So that's something, yeah, that's something really cool that I didn't really yeah. know. And there you go, I've lived here for most of my life. So <laughs> um I was also gonna say I think I love that you mentioned your two favorite places and places at complete opposite ends of the world. Um but I was but and but I've heard again like amazing things both about Australia and San Francisco. Um so I've jotted them down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's one thing that I would absolutely advocate is if you can travel, 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 seeing different cultures, different parts of the world. It's 
fascinating from a personal level um and i've put you know personally i think it helps you grow as an individual um getting to see you know how how people live in different places around the world um and getting to experience their culture it's uh yeah a really really good thing definitely yeah i'd say that's definitely like one of the key key things i definitely look for as well when i go traveling nice Okay, um, so if we jump into the next question, John. So there might be a few people watching who might not know what your company does um, and like what your role looks like. So are you okay to give us a bit of an insight? Yeah, what yeah. Like? Um, so so I, I joined service now um, about six months ago um, and um, I, I had a sort of like change from where I was, where I'd been um, for 13 years previous to that. So I previously I'd worked at British Telecom um, in the UK. Um, but I wanted a, I wanted to change of direction. I wanted to go and work for a company that actually made their own stuff. Um, so the sort of like the end, end uh, uh, supplier, if you like, um, and the way that the market's going um you know i wanted to move into a company that does SaaS based software so so ServiceNow is a platforms business um and most people will probably know service now from uh, an it ticketing system perspective um so it service management um and uh, sort of like helplines use use service now um to log incidents and then to work them through to handle requests problem and change uh, tickets and stuff like that um so that's primarily what service now is known for in the industry um but it's it's so much more than than that so we've got pre-built sort of like workflow areas um so we've got an end-to-end -end hr system one of the things that we did last year in the pandemic was for the um the scottish uh, national health um trust was service now built a covid vaccination program so we so from end to end we we spun this up um and was able to um automate the booking system um and you know the the contacting of the uh, the scottish public um to go in and book a vaccination slot and stuff like that um and that was done in a matter of weeks on on the service now platform um we do uh, safe workplace um, you know, uh, type things so we can assess occupancy in buildings. You can book a, um, uh, you can book, you know, a desk um, and you can verify your health status on there. You get issued a QR code that allows you into the building, all things like that. So, so th th there's multiple aspects and facets to, to service now and what, what we can do, um, I guess my role specifically um as a as a solutions consultant is to go and work with existing customers but also new customers to service now and help them explore how they can take advantage of service now as, as, a, as a software uh, as a piece of software um and how they can build upon existing investment if they're already a customer but how they can then actually you know take take on board service now adopt it and then evolve their usage of it so sort of acting in that trusted advisor space um working with with their technical teams or their biz lead business users to uncover what their business need is and what their business problems are and then talking to them about how service now can can uh, you know can help resolve those yeah that's yeah. that's super awesome and it's really cool how your company is doing such high impact work to uh, like the vaccination stuff is is critical um and also like the future of work about finding places to work within the office and making sure the capacity is is correct and all that stuff is super important yeah yeah i think the speed of how of how quickly you implemented this set up is particularly particularly with some you know like in terms of the demand and what was going like trying to get those vaccines out as quick as possible so that itself was really like really awesome to hear I guess like coming into obviously going from BT to here, like what did you, what do you find were like some some what were some of the adjustments or that you found? Oh, this is very different from yeah your previous row. So, um, the I guess 
the propensity to use our own software. So, so we class ourselves internally as customer zero. So, so what we say is, is that, you know, we, we want to use every, everything that we put out into the market, we will use ourselves. Whereas within other organizations, um, that, you know, that isn't always the case because we're, we're, you know, I was, I was reselling other, other organizations, um, uh, equipment or software. Whereas here it's very much about, right. You immerse yourself in, in the technology so that you're living and breathing, using that technology every day. And I, I know it's a, it's similar in Cisco in terms of, you know, you use your own, your own kit, um, and your own software, uh, to the maximum so that you, you can wax lyrical about the, uh, the benefits of it. And it's, um, and, and for me, it was, it was, you know, very, very different because it's, you know, a brand, brand new sort of like area for me to move into. Um, but the, the support that you get, um, in, in service now to get you up to speed, um, and, you know, able to deliver value in as quick of time as possible is, is amazing. And the amount of training, um, and time that they you know give you to do that is second to none it's you know it's it's a fantastic onboarding experience from start to finish um but i guess the other thing as well is that there's a clear vision within the organization of where they want to be and what the customer imperative is that we're trying to address so so our our tagline is as as my uh, as my my top says the world works with service now so that's that's our re rebrand that's come out in the last uh, in the last month and it really is about you know make what making whatever an organization is doing whatever whether or not it's being engaging with a customer an external customer whether or not it's an internal customer whether or not it's a um a, an incident whether or not it's a hr issue payroll issue whatever it's about removing the friction from that and and this is this is what really excites me about the organization and which i've found quite different is that clarity of vision and purpose that service now's leadership team has got and the energy that they have all got in terms of driving that forwards and it's it's one of those things that you know is um it, it's infectious that enthusiasm is infectious throughout the company and and that's where you know, again, it's it's a really positive outlook um, in terms of where the company's going, and uh, you know that that's a it's yeah it's a fantastic place to be, um, and uh, yeah, it's quite awe inspiring to see all the fantastic people that you know are in in and around the business. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, no. uh, yeah, I was just gonna say it just sounds like an amazing place, and I think what you hit the nail on the head when you talk about you know like. Be that energy being infectious, people wanting to go into the nitty gritty of not just the, the products you guys make, but also, you know, like you said, the vision, understanding your customer, that I think just like you said, it spreads so much and you can see it in organizations um, without do it correctly, just like how much more of a positive impact it has yeah. on everyone that's working and on the results that are produced. Yeah, for Absolutely. sure. When you, when you were talking and describing service now, I was thinking about Cisco and the, the parallels about how that infectious kind of attitude and it, and it being more than just a tagline um, really makes the makes the organization a great place to work. So really cool that, that you get to work for a company that does that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. So you're a member of the Gateway, um, one of our most active, I would say. Um, so what have you found valuable about being part of the community? What keeps you logging back in all the time? Um, so one of the, um, one of the things that I find most engaging and useful about the gateway is the way that it collates the information of Cisco products and, and, and latest, you know, um, the late, the latest thing that's coming out and it, it's the way that it presents it in that bite size, you know, format and chunk, um, and this is one of the things that I've regularly sort of like given feedback on is about the way that the challenges are structured. It's the fact that you can drop in 
you can pick a challenge up. It's not taking an hour out of your day, which then becomes a hardship and a chore. And it's like, oh, I don't really want to have to go back in and do that. Actually, it's five minute. Got a cup of coffee. Drink, you know, do do the challenge. Read read the blog post. Read the um uh, uh the digital life cycle. With, you know, whatever it, whatever it happens to be in terms of the content that's being given to you. Consume that. Provide provide some contextual feedback. It isn't taking a big part out of your day. So so I'll, I'll say now. So I sign on in the morning. The gateway is the second web page that I open up, right, and log into, because it's that five minutes of seeing what seeing what challenges are there. Right, okay, then I'm interested in that one. I'll have a look at that one. I'll spend the five minutes before I then even open up my Outlook. So I'm, I'm I'm checking, you know, what's on what's on the gateway before I'm opening up my company email account because it is consumable. Right. And, and that's the key bit for me is that it's not, oh, I've got to scroll through so much stuff to get to what I want to find. It's there. It's easy. So, you know, there's some, some challenges. I'm like, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't, that, that's, I'll do the challenge, but it's got nothing to do with what I'm, you know, what I'm doing on a day to day basis. But then actually, there will be a set of challenges that come along, which I haven't got anything to do with. But if you hadn't put the challenges out there, I wouldn't have gone and found that information. I wouldn't have then been shown this capability. So for me, it's about, yep, yeah, reinforcing learning and pointing me to the latest updates on stuff that I'm already, you know, engaged with and, and, and understand. But it's also, did you know this? And did you know this? And are you aware of this? Because if, if this wasn't there as a, uh, you know, as, as a platform for me to be able to engage with, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily go hunting for that information. So therefore I wouldn't, I would, you know, it, it would just be left in the background. And this is one of the things that I said on the, uh, on, on the CX channel, um, was around the, um, uh, AMP for endpoints, um, challenge that was themed around the matrix and, you know, uh, given merrily on the, on the channel, a, a lot of kudos for that, that, for that set of challenges, because. I wouldn't have looked at anything to do with AMP for endpoints if it wasn't for those set of challenges that, that, that you know, that, sh that the channel put out. Um, and I was very, you know, in, again, in the feedback that I gave around that, it was very much, this is, you know, this is, this is exactly the type of thing in terms of the gamification of the challenges, the engagement that it drives with you because you want to get to the next step. You want to see the next bit that's going on in that challenge series. That's what makes this such a plunk, uh, such a fun community and why, you know, I, I try when you guys ask for feedback, I try to give as much feedback as I can um, to make because it's, it's a virtuous circle. You know, you're asking us, how can you improve if we don't give you that feedback? You know, it, we, we, we don't improve. We don't get better at what we do. Um, so so I, I yeah, I, I, I love the whole the whole concept of of the gateway um and uh you know and the community that that surrounds it it's, it's brilliant yeah that's awesome to hear and like it's definitely good to hear that you you are getting real value out of it because that's that's kind of that the focus of what we do is is taking all this information that people from within the business want to share and, and making sure that it really does drive value and it's not just trying to support our own business goals. So I'm, I'm glad that you enjoy it. Yeah, we're, we're usually very like intentional in terms of on there. So again, like both from a discovery point of view and from just what you usually hunt, what you're hunting for, just making sure that you can get to the content or be discovered or surprised like by the stuff that's out there. Um, so yeah, like like Nick said, we're super super happy that you're getting a lot of value from it. One one hundred percent, yeah. Okay. Um. So, as everyone knows, you are you're the CX winner from the Global Advocate Awards. So, congratulations again, John! An Keep amazing you. achievement. Um, so, uh, yeah, so tell us a bit more about like how you felt when you found out. Uh, yeah, so 
it's not an understatement to say that I was shocked um, that that I'd won. Um, I was uh, I, I was I was chatting with uh, uh, Mary Lee before before the awards, and she was like, "You are going to attend, aren't you? You are going to attend." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely be there." Um, and uh, she's like, "Okay, good, good." And I was like, "Yeah, I don't don't hold out much hope of me winning though." Um, and she said, "Well, why?" And I said, "Well, you know, I look at it." This is this is a global award. There's little old me sitting in Northampton, um, <laughs> and uh, and I'm looking at what the other advocates that were up for the award have done, and just to be nominated and in the same sort of like you know category as those guys was fantastic. You know, for me personally, to be recognised and and on you know sharing the same virtual stage with them, if you like. Um, and I was just thinking, yeah, you know, some of the some of these guys have done absolutely awesome things, you know, with 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 you guys and in their existing co companies. Um, and yeah, I I, I don't uh, yeah don't stand a chance of winning. So, but just just being nominated was was fantastic. When yeah, when my uh, when my name was read out, it was it was a sort of a uh, a double take moment of what did, <laughs> you know that. that <laughs> this isn't real um so yeah incredibly shocked very humbled um to you know to receive that award um i think you know it's it, it, yeah it, it was just yeah a, a, a real honor uh for me to to be able to to be able to get that um yeah that that war, reward and uh you know the my my colleagues at work i said oh look got this uh this um uh, award ceremony that um I'm up for for an award and I was all looking at it and I was going so yeah this is a, a global award yeah and I thought like, yeah 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 this so it's not not just UK and I or EMEA it's yeah the every, everybody um from uh, from the uh, from the global gateway um and then I said that you know that I'd won it uh, the following day and they were everybody at work was just like that's just that's just brilliant fantastic so you know it, uh yeah i i, I still i mean the, the awards uh it's it's just there so it's uh um still uh what well, there you go can't can't really see it because it's uh because of the glass but yeah it's it it's sits there just behind me uh as, as a reminder um that it, that it is real <laughs> <laughs> and it did actually happen <laughs> john i can say real or equally as excited to have been able to share that, share that with you and announce you as the winner. I know Marley was, um, you know, soup soups like trying to, try, trying to keep it contained every time she was messaging you. <laughs> uh, but I, you know what? Thanks for sharing that. I didn't like. It's lovely to hear that you're, you know, like when you went and told your colleagues, everyone was excited and really, really excited. And I do want to repeat, like again, like you were a very valued member of our community you're always right you know not just to us when you i know you mentioned giving feedback but also to other advocates like i see the comments you, you when you reply to other people and you try to be really helpful and that's what the gateway community is about it's yeah. about connect and part of it is connecting with other people and you know helping each other out definitely yeah definitely what do you think that uh the award means for you like on a personal level on a professional level do you think um, it might help you in the future. Um, so, a, a personal level, um, it was, you know, gratifying to see, like I say, that the effort that I put in um, is, is recognised. Um, you know, by by by, by Cisco. Um, uh, I think I've been an advocate of Cisco services solutions and uh you know uh, hardware and software for many many years um in terms of in the organizations that i've worked worked for um i've been able i've been fortunate enough to um uh, to go over to san jose to uh, cisco head office um and uh and, and go go and do an ebc there and uh attended um, a few cisco live events and stuff like that but it's it's always for for me these type of things always happen to somebody else right and and it's so on a personal level it's like i say uh, i 
yeah it, it it was really touching that i you know managed to 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 win that award um and just yeah meant meant a lot to me um you know from from the effort that i've put in and the, you know it just shows that if you do share you do engage in the community you do support those around you then it does get recognized so so you know from from a personal perspective that's uh it it, it made made it all you know worthwhile um from a professional point of view it's it, it's great because i can say yeah that's me you know i i, <laughs> I, I did i i won that you know i'm a, i can officially say i am a global award winner um <laughs> uh, you know of of a cisco award which is it's you know it's no mean it's no mean feat and it's uh you know a really um it's a it's a great thing and when i look at again that not just not just this category but the other winners within the global advocacy awards there are some fantastic members of this community that all take part in their you know different areas um but the key thing is it's like any great team each part of the community works together to support the other and you know we it, it, each channel is a part of that uh, you know a part of that community and it's it's great to be you know on a professional level it's great to be recognized as an ambassador for the cx channel in the same way that the other advocates are for their for their individual channels and awards as well because it is such a honor to be you know recognized in that way and to be able to give something back so so, so thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you for everything that you i mean you do within the community within cisco within your own company too uh, that's it's a well-deserved win so congratulations again good job Okay, hey, um, I think we're on to the last question. Um, so yeah, so I guess, John, for people who might be looking at the Advocate Awards or just like looking at the gateway and, but, oh, how do I get into community? How do I start? How do I become an advocate? Or like, what type of advice would you give them? I, I mean, for me, it's really simple. Get involved, you know, that's, that's it. It's just a community is about everybody putting in and sharing experiences sharing your knowledge not everybody's got the right answer but that's what a community is about it's about different people's perceptions different people's experiences and putting that out there for other people to see so just if you've got any doubts at all join try it if you don't like it i can't see how you won't like it but if you don't like it you leave you've got nothing to lose you've got everything to gain it's it is such a great like i say place it is a friendly you know friendly uh friendly area um yeah so just just get involved provide i mean uh, again i'll go back to the feedback for me provide relevant contextual feedback when you are asked because you guys are doing a great job of putting content into our hands when you ask us did that hit the spot how can we improve it give you know again my advice is to everybody give you feedback because that's how we improve that's how how we will keep having good quality engagement because if we don't it becomes stale if we don't change if we don't do something different then you know we, it, people people will just will just be like Oh, well, I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm not going to bother doing that. It spend the time, spend the extra couple of minutes, not just saying one or two words of feedback, just give it that personal touch and get involved because I know, you know, we, we have a saying that it's a uh, feedback is the gift that all keeps on giving because it is because you, you are helping shape the future of the challenges and the content that comes out on the gateway. So as I say, get involved you know, and, and, and help, help, help the community grow. That's, that's all I can say. Love it. Awesome. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we will look forward to speaking with you again soon in the future. Thank you very much.
All right. Take care, everybody. Right. Cool. Bye. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, John.